Well, it's happened again. Rue has pulled the, the wool from up underneath me and I'm all engaged into this. You know what? This has been the most up and down season for me. Child, one minute I'm in, one minute I'm out, another minute I don't care. I'm back in. So here we go. Top four. RuPaul's Drag Race. Let's talk about this, you guys. And I'm like, come on through, cookie. I want to pull my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for RuPaul's Drag Race. This is season 10, episode 12. As I said, I've been on a roller coaster ride with Ru through this little thing here. And it's one minute I'm in, one minute I'm out, one minute I'm saying to hell with it. You know, that whole thing. We're down to this top four. And I found myself totally immersed back into this again. And I can't tell you, I'm not team anybody. I'm not. I'm not team anybody. I just want to see what is going to go on. That's all I can say. Now, the one thing that I will say, there was one comment, one statement, actually, that was actually made this episode. And the statement was made by Asia and the rest of the girls basically kind of agreed. And the statement was this. The one true winner of season 10 should be Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie. And you bitches are right. The true winner of season 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race is Miss Vanjie. Who is the bitch that we are going to remember from season 10? I don't give a damn who Ru puts the crown on, who he gives the money to. The one drag queen that we are going to remember from season 10 is Vanessa Vanjie Mateo, honey. She's the bitch that, for me, for me, has won. RuPaul's Drag Race Season 10. I've been Team Vanjie from Episode 1, and I'm Team Vanjie going on out. But anyway, we can't have it like that because Ru sent her ass out. But anyway, if y'all ask me who won Season 10, Vanjie, Vanjie, Vanjie. <laughs> I love her. Shout out to Miss Vanjie, girl. Do your thing, bitch. Get money, bitch. Get money. Anyway, okay, so <sighs> this episode, this episode was fun. This one was fun. They actually, I'm going to tell you what they did, but it was fun. It was, I, I liked it. This was one of those ones that I would have loved to, to be a part of, to get the direction on, to just be in that. I would have loved to have been in this. Um, Asia's confessionals are something else. Like I told you all, Asia has gone into uh, pageant mode. And her confessionals have been a little shy of nice. They've been, you know, very competitive, very matter of fact. It's like, all right, cool. But it did taper off this episode. It tapered off to where she wasn't in a nasty place where, you know, because I thought she was kind of leaning to the nasty side. But, yeah, it just is what it is. It's, it's what was necessary um, for her to get where she needed to be. Um. The one thing I didn't really care for, she did. She didn't feel as though Eureka should be there. She doesn't feel as though Eureka should be part of of uh, the top four because she's loud and um, and she's extra. What the hell does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything? Asia, bitch, that's some old insecurity on your part. That's some old insecure ass bullshit that you spewing from your mouth. Not cute. Not cute. Um, that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. And that makes you look very shady and very petty. But anyway, moving on. So we really didn't do a mini challenge. Everything was basically based on the maxi challenge, period. Um, 
And my challenge was this. It was American, the Rue mix. So what they did was they remixed Rue's song American, which is the title track off of the last album, um, which I do I do really like that song. I like that song a lot. Um, each girl got the chance to write a solo verse to American. Bitch, I would have loved to be able to do that with them. Would have loved to do that. I think that would have been so much fun. Um, yeah, I, I would have loved to be a part of that. Would have loved to be a part of that. And they did great, like every last one of them. And I'll have to say that this on this episode, I really don't have anything bad to say. Every one of these four bitches did great. They did great work. Their verses they wrote were so true to them as a person and they fit in so well. And it wasn't just them. It was the leadership of Todrick Hall because Todrick Hall did all of this. He led them through this and then he did the choreography as well. But the leadership that he gave them during the studio session, please, please. It actually did show you how bad Todrick Hall really is. Um, most of us know how talented Tardrick Hall is, but I don't think everybody knows. Like, beyond being a phenomenal talent, Tardrick has become a hell of a teacher. You know, and that that probably all just strings over from his whole, you know, to be a choreographer, you're, you're a fierce-ass teacher. You know, to be able to teach choreography to a person and pull from them what you want. You're a fierce-ass teacher, but it doesn't always translate into other areas. But when I watched him doing this studio session, I was just in awe of Todrick Hall and what he was pulling from. And you could just literally see it. I mean, of course, we got the editing and all of that, but you could see him literally pulling. I mean, like teeth on some of them, but just pulling what they need, the musicality. How do you just literally pull musicality out of a person who is being very robotic? you know, about what they're doing and they're stumbling over their words and you keep working and pulling and tugging at them. And he pulled and tugged at each girl individually differently. His approach with each one was different. It was something to watch. And he pulled it out and them bitches was on it when he did it for the girls that wanted to rap and the girls that wanted to sing and the girls that wanted to go back and forth. Please. Please, 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 Todrick Hall, you are a bad motherfucker. I was, I was in awe of Todrick. I was totally here for Todrick Hall. But anyway, so they had to do, write their own verse. Fun, fun, fun. Then they had to actually do a guest spot on Rue and Michelle Visage's podcast. Fabulous as well. Something real great. So they, like I said, they went ahead, they did their, their, their little thing. Um... When he first started with Aquaria, you know, she was bebopping around and she was, she had that ad, you know, Aquaria is delusional. So she had her whole delusional thing going on and she kind of went in and she thought she was killing it, but she wasn't. And Todrick was like, girl, what the hell's going on? And she was giving, honey, Todrick loved my verse. And Todrick was saying, child, this is some sketchy vocals, girl. No, ma'am. And made the bitch get it right. And I think everything kind of came together for Aquaria when she she did her podcast piece. And she came across very Aquaria. Very fake, very phony, and somewhat of a liar is what she came across for. You know, as to me. When she got to choreography. Something happened. Something happened. And that bullshit kind of fell off. And Aquaria, it was like Aquaria grew up in a 20 minute or a 30 minute piece. It's like she grew up and some of that bullshit just fell off. And I think it was there was a point because she's sitting over there crying. I was like, here she goes, some more bullshit. But after that happened, her whole attitude had changed. It was less of this. Mm, and it was more of this 
I'm really here. And it was genuine for a change. So something happened in there. And I think it has something to do with Tawdry Cole, too. And that, that he wasn't kissing her ass and, and praise and everything she did. So I don't know. Something happened for Aquaria. And um, it restored my faith in the fact that Aquaria, yes, darling, you do belong there. Because I would question whether or not you really belong there. And whether you was just pretty, pretty and aggravating. But no, something happened. And I'll say yes, Shantae, bitch, you stay. Anyway, Eureka. Eureka's ass was absolutely excellent. Absolutely excellent. You could tell Eureka was like me. She was elated to do the challenge. She had a fucking ball down there at the studio session with Tardrick and the producers. She Eureka enjoyed herself. She she embraced that moment and it's probably something that she'll never forget. She she was Eureka and all of Eureka. No apologies. Nobody fussed at her. And Tawdrick and them loved what she gave. You know, all of her extra, everything just fit in. It was fine. It was the time to be, you know, unapologetically Eureka, and it worked. And everybody appreciated what she brought to the table. So that was really, really good. Um, Cameron. Cameron first was, you know, it was like, girl, what the fuck is the problem? It was like pulling teeth. But after a minute, Tawdrick whipped her ass into shape and that bitch got it because she was the robot. It was and then the next thing you know, Tawdrick was fucking with her and the next thing you know, it was and it was just rolling. It was just rolling. I was like, okay, Cameron, bitch. Come on here. Cameron, I can see actually putting out music. Her aunt, definitely Eureka. I can see her putting out music. Same thing happened with Asia. Asia come out from the door to, I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. It's not what I do. I am a drag queen. This is what I do. He got her down there, but she was open. She was open to the process, and it was no problem. Asia's shit was flowing like that, 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 just rolling after just a little bit of, um, push and direction from Tawdrick. It just was rolling. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. This is amazing. I, I was, I enjoyed what, like I literally, I sat here and I was just all in. And I haven't been like this in a couple of episodes here. Anyway, so more to the podcasts. Eureka, Eureka's podcast appearance was very good. It was very heartfelt. Um, and I believed every word she said. Cameron, a little dry, a little dry, but that's classic Cameron. Asia, really good, really good, very adult. Um, very much in line with my character and the way I approach things. And probably has something to do with age. You know, because she, she's an older queen, too. So it probably has to do with age and maturity. So that's probably why it really resonated with me. But really good. Really good. Um, but overall, Eureka, excellent interview. I can't wait to be able to see Eureka do other interviews um, after this is over. And she goes and she interviews and talks to, like, Entertainment Tonight and different places like that. I would love to see Eureka on Hey Queen. I would love to see Johnny Govern, if you see this, you or Miss uh, Miss Couture, honey, you all need to get Eureka on Hey Queen pronto. I would love to see her on an episode of Hey Queen. I will be in here screaming. Do you hear me? Screaming. She'll be fantastic on there. But anyway, so all of that's that. The choreography. The choreography, I help you to say, yes, Tarja Call, you put some hard choreography on these whores. You did. Aquaria, bitch, you danced down. Aquaria killed it. She really did. She literally, she killed it. She killed the choreography. It was really good. Asia, she was on. She was on. It was perfect. She, it was just good. It was really, really good. Nothing I can say wrong. Um, Eureka, child. Yes. 
when they were trying to practice it, she was overthinking it. But when it came time to really do it, that bitch got down. She got down. Cameron, it was rough during the choreography, but at the end, that bitch, she was on it. She got it. She got it. And it all fit. I absolutely love the full video version of it, the way the song was remixed, the way in which they put them in, where they chose to put which girl's verse. I absolutely loved it. It was better than every Rusical, Rusical, Rusical that we have actually seen this season. This remix video for American, the song remix, remix of American. If they can, if you can actually purchase it, I will definitely be getting it. I loved it. I loved it. Now, when they come to the end, the judges, they had absolutely nothing bad to say about any of the four girls. So it doesn't surprise me that I was going to, that I would end up the same way because I really, I don't have anything bad to say. I, I think they all, it was time to bring your A game and every last one of those bitches, you fought to be there. And Rue said, okay, this is your last time to impress me. And it's time to lip sync for your life, honey. And they did call me mother. And all of them had gowns on because the final four um, runway was extravaganza. Um, it was elegan eleganza, extravaganza, child. They all had gowns on. And everybody looked real, real nice. Everybody. Everybody looked nice. Everybody, nobody was like copied looks off. They were all their individual selves and the shit all worked. Everybody looked good. Um, so they all had some limitations because again, they're all in gowns and they're doing call me mother. So it's truly a lip sync competition at this point, because you can't, there's not going to be any shablams and any splits with all these bitches with these gowns on. I said, if anybody pulls any hair off or rips any pieces of the gowns off, I'm going to cut them. And they didn't, they just lip synced. And baby, when I tell you Aquaria ate them, Aquaria ate them. Ate them like she's on Diddy's show, honey. Ate them. She worked all around that stage. She wasn't overbearing. She wasn't stepping in front of people. She just literally worked the stage and ate the girls. She ate them. And you are a young queen mama. And girl, I'm proud of you. I, I, child, you know, I ain't been a queer, team Aquaria at all. I ain't been down for her at all. She tore the, um, the lip sync up. She did. But Rue pulled it and said, baby, I'm sending no one home. Everybody's going to the finale. It's a four-girl finale. It is what it is. I was like, yes, I was here for it. I am here for it. Bring the shit on. Next week, we're going to do a reunion. I'm here for that, bitch. I want to see what's going to be said. And I can't wait to see my girl Van Gianni. So if we have a um, reunion next week. And I'll definitely, I will be... Um, Reviewing the reunion, and then the finale, the full grand finale, will be in two weeks. So, I am here for it. I'm excited again. I'm actually, I am excited again now about season 10, the way I was for episode one. Strange, but I am. So, I'm all in. I hope you are. I will see you guys in a week. Later. <laughs>